Solar Wisdom for Beginners Are you new to solar energy and are just looking to get started? Or maybe you've already dived in and are getting kind of overwhelmed. Greetings folks, I wanted to record a video with some different thoughts about solar for beginners. So without further ado, here are seven bits of wisdom which I think are highly applicable to beginners, but I have a feeling that this video could also help people who have been in solar for some time. And just to be clear, the term beginner is no insult. I'm a beginner at a thousand things and I'm still working on it. Sharing knowledge and experience together makes the community a whole lot smarter over the long haul. Okay, so number one is not understanding the difference between knowing generally how to do something or knowing about something versus having years of real world hands-on experience actually doing it. Networking with good people and sharing knowledge is a great way to get started and avoid costly mistakes. This is what I call easy learning. That said, everyone makes mistakes. Mistakes, that's hard learning. Sooner or later, you're going to make a mistake, and that's an opportunity to learn everything you can so you can not only help yourself, but other people. Fine-tuned experience is not something that you can fake. If you have the opportunity to learn from someone who has that fine-tuned experience before you delve into solar or get too far into it, that's a valuable opportunity and not to be missed. And number two is trusting the wrong types of reviews. Making purchase decisions after watching a review, that's a review in quotes, of a product the reviewer, that's in quotes, got for free. This is a common beginner mistake. The best reviews, hands down, are those where it was bought with the person's own money and still works after a couple of years. How about a one or two year review by an ordinary person? Yes, it's hard to pump out those kinds of reviews. Those are harder to find for a reason. But those are the kind I would lean towards, hands down, any day of the week. And mistake number three, allowing a popular figure or a commercial entity to steer your thinking without being willing to do and actually doing in practice your own independent research. And number four, an unwillingness to slow down, pay attention to the details, take notes, document, label everything. An unwillingness to delay gratification until you've done all the research and have all the details in order. In other words, showing the characteristics of an adult. And number five, this one's kind of funny or not funny, depending on how you look at it, but it's being envious of another person's setup or their equipment. Seriously, solar power is not about ego. It should be a culture of freedom, independence, helping other people, and gaining knowledge. And that is why I got into solar energy. If being off the electrical grid or having a lot of batteries feeds the ego, then it's not about freedom and independence at all. That's not going to help anybody. Spending too much time looking at other people and what they have and how they're doing it may actually distract you from finding the correct solution for yourself and for your own family. And number six, this one could offend a lot of people, but I'm not here to offend anybody, but I'm not here to sugarcoat it either. The truth is the truth, and I'm calling this number six, not understanding the off-grid truth. Being off the electrical grid has become like the holy grail of solar, but this is a deeply misunderstood topic. The truth is you can't eat solar panels. Being off the electrical grid only goes so far. If the person goes to the same Walmart, the same gas station, the same grocery store, drives on the same roads, and uses the same internet and phone service, watches the same TV, goes to the same movie theater, and stays distracted and glued to their smartphone 24-7 just like everybody else, that means they're just like everybody else. The grid is the grid. Approaching solar power from the standpoint of preparedness, resiliency, and readiness for emergencies is the smart option. The simplest and fastest way to get into solar energy as a beginner is to simply buy a solar generator and a couple of solar panels and know how to use them in an emergency. It's a great way to start out and you can always build up on that foundation later if you want more. And last but not least, number seven, times will change. How far ahead are you looking? Unfortunately, we are continuously immersed in a culture of short-sightedness. There are big changes coming, I assure you. The person who looks ahead and plans ahead is going to have the edge. In order to keep this video short, I can't delve too far into this topic, but I will give you some examples. One example that any beginner should be aware of is the fragility and the dependency on the supply chain that all major solar components have. For example, you may feel very good that you bought yourself a powerful DC to AC inverter and it runs all the loads in your house. But think about it. What happens if that inverter fails? Do you have a spare? And do you know how to work on it and repair it? Or do you know somebody who does? What if you can't get spare parts? What if you can't get support? What if you can't get a replacement inverter? Then what will you do? All your appliances are based on an inverter and they run off of AC voltage. So if you're off the grid but your inverter burned out 
and everything's gone downhill and you can't get a replacement, what are you going to do? The old military saying, two is one and one is none. You should have a backup and a backup to your backup. Solar panels are fun, but you should be thinking about the full spectrum of preparedness and readiness, not just solar energy, because if you don't, you're going to get caught flat-footed at the wrong time. I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.